Hey guys, welcome back to video number two in my Python series, and I'm sure you're eager to dive right into the code and get started learning Python. In the last video, I showed you basically how to check what version of Python you have installed, and I gave you some notes about uh, you know, the fact that we have Python 3 and Python 2, and that dis different distributions ship a different version of Python. And now, at this point, you should know how to get to Python 3, and we'll go ahead and just go from there and we'll get started. So I'll go ahead and go over here to my laptop. And what we're gonna first start doing is we're gonna be working with the Python shell. We will be writing actual programs in actual scripts. But for right now, I wanna teach you guys the basics before we get to that point. And it's best to do that in the Python shell. Now the Python shell is actually uh, called REPL, R-E-P-L, so it's like that, and it actually stands for read, avail, print, loop. And I'm just gonna call it the Python console for simplicity because I don't really wanna say REPL over and over again, that just sounds kinda of strange. So I'll just refer to that as a Python shell. Now since I'm running Ubuntu, my version of Python 3 or is actually with the Python 3 command, and if I do dash V, I see that it's Python 3.6.7. The, the minor version doesn't really matter. We wanna be on Python 3. So your distribution, if you do Python without the 3 dash V, you might get Python 2 or you might get Python 3. Whichever one of these two commands gives you Python 3, you're gonna to wanna to go with that. So I'll clear the screen. And then if you do Python 3 in my case, I'm not going to uh, differentiate the command uh, any, any more in this video. So. I'll just leave it up to you to replace what I say with Python 3 or whatever your binary is. But if I press enter, I am right in the REPL shell or the Python shell. And what I can do is I can run commands here to execute actual Python um, code right here from the shell. And an example of that is the common hello world. So how do you do hello world in Python? Well, it's easy. It's just print, then in parentheses, and quotes, just do hello world. And I'm gonna press enter. And you can see all it did was print hello world. Now, in a shell, I could pretty much do the same thing in, uh, I'm doing it in all caps with same difference, in bash, pretty much um, very similarly to that. There's the echo command in bash, but back in Python, we can see that we need to do that a little bit differently. So what we have here is a function and we have the print function and what that's doing is, th is that's going to just simply um, print a, a you know, string of text, we just call it string, which is a data type, we'll get into data types later, and it's simply going to echo that back to the shell. Now if I was to write an actual program, that program at this point would only have that one line and all that program would do is just print hello world, which is very useless, but this is the starting point for uh, you know, most tutorials and I figured that this one would be no exception. So one thing you might be wondering is, well, we're in the Python shell, how the heck do we get out of it? So there's another function you can execute, exit and then in parentheses uh, right there, just like that, uh, this is a function. Um, which we'll go into later on, but this is just exit. If I press enter, all it's going to do is close me out of the Python shell, and then I could certainly just go back into it anytime I need it. But it's actually easier to just do hold control and press D, and that just drops you right out of the uh, shell. So you could just remember control D, D for drop, and that gets you out of the Python shell. I find that a heck of a lot easier than just typing exit in a function format just like that, because you simply just have to hold control and press D and the same thing is used in a normal terminal anyway. So you may or may not already have control D actually in your uh, mindset already. So go ahead and clear the screen. Okay, so at this point, I wanna show you guys some basic math. And this is just one of those things, just one of those basics we need to get out of the way, not particularly exciting. I promise you some fun things are coming in this series, so just stick with me. But we're gonna to wanna to go back into the Python shell, and there we can actually do math straight away, and we could simplify just by doing one plus two and press enter. There you go, it gives you the answer. I could do five minus two, you get the answer, one, plus two, you get the answer. So already we could actually see that we are 
able to do some basic math. And as we go along, we'll be adding some numbers together and we'll actually be making this part of our code. So it's actually pretty useless right now, but it's just one of those things that, you know, I'd like to show you just so we check that box and you know that the Python shell is actually able to do that. But one of the things that we want to do, though, is find out what type is this. And there's different data types, and I'm not going to go over data types in this video in, in detail. We'll get to that later. But, you know, I showed you a print function, which is just print, and then in quotes and parentheses, we can print something. Well, apparently I can't type, but it, I print something. But we can actually do the same thing by just, without quotes, we can actually do print one plus two. And we get the same thing as if, as if we did actually one plus two. It's the same idea. Effectively, what we're doing is print one plus two, and then any of the other math functions that I've showed you so far. So five minus two, press enter, and it's simply printing five minus two. The difference here, we don't have quotes. So what happens if I was to put that in quotes? You probably already know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you anyway. So I'll press enter, and it actually just printed five minus two. So you actually see the difference with what a string is right then and there because a string in quotes just basically prints everything as is. It's gonna print the five minus two because it's a string of characters. It's not actually going to interpret them or see them as numbers. But what type is that actually? So if I just do type, for example, that is a function, but what if I do type and then I do five minus two and then I press enter? And you can see that it is an integer. So the numbers here are integers and if I did the same thing, but I put quotes around it, you can see that the class is different. Now it's a string. So the type is actually pretty important. It's something that we'll probably get into later. Don't have to worry about that too much right now. But just remember the takeaway of type is whatever you put in the parentheses, it'll tell you what the type of that thing actually is. And if you're ever curious, is this a, you know, what kind of data type is this? Well, you can find out by putting whatever it is you want to find out more about inside type, and then you just execute it. It'll tell you what type it actually is. So one of the things that we can do is do some division. So one of the things that I can do is this. I'm going to do 10 divided by 5, and we get something interesting here. We get 2.0. Well, why did we get... 2.0 instead of 2, because 5 goes into 10 two times. So to investigate that, we could simply do type, and then we could put that in there. And you know the same 10 divided by 5 that we put already, press enter, and it's a type of float. So float is a number with a decimal, and if we, you know, we were to do just the 10, for example, you see that the type is integer. So already we know of several data types, even though we haven't even gotten to that part of the series yet. It's just something good to know anyway, that a number without a decimal is an integer, but with a decimal is actually a float. So one thing that you might be curious about is what if you don't want the decimal, right? You know, earlier we, we basically did a division. We did 10 divided by five and we got 2.0. But one thing to mention really quickly, if we do double slashes, we get just two. So basically that just makes it an integer and we can verify that by simply doing this using type yet again. And we can see that our answer is an integer. So we didn't really accomplish a whole lot in this video. You do understand maybe a few things about type, even though we'll get more into detail about the different types of their data types later on. I showed you how to print some text to the terminal. You know, you know what a string is now. Those are the takeaways in this video. Again, not extremely useful, but you know, we have to have some basic knowledge to build on. And from here, we're going to get more and more advanced as we go along. So what you've seen is just basically the Python shell. You give it a command, you can execute that command, kind of similar to a, you know, a Linux terminal, and you get the results of the command and the, Python shell is very useful even after you develop actual programs using text files, which we're gonna get into, 
because it allows you to test code without writing a script. If you're curious, well, what is this kind of if statement? What does this do? You can write if statements here. We'll get into if statements later, but the takeaway is the Python shell is useful for testing. So even when we graduate from it, we'll still go back to it from time to time. Maybe you have one-off Python commands that you want to execute. You'll use the Python shell for that. So from here, um, I'll have the next video in the series uploaded very soon, guys. So go ahead and stay tuned for that, and we will just keep building upon our knowledge and explore deeper the world of Python. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out my sponsor and my cloud server provider, Linode. Linode now features a new and improved dashboard, their cloud manager, that makes it an absolute breeze to set up your own Linux server. They even have Arch Linux. How cool is that? And of course, they have all the staples such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and more. And it's very easy to set up a server near you. In fact, Linode currently has nine worldwide data centers with two more set to appear this year in India and Canada. So definitely check them out, guys. I appreciate them as a sponsor. I appreciate you guys as a viewer. So thanks again for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I will have more content coming for you very soon. Stay tuned.